Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome to the 1.18 Caves and Cliffs update. Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to another look at Vintage Story 1.18. In our last video, we took an initial look at a bunch of the new blocks coming in the upcoming version of the game, but that was back in pre-1, before a bunch of other changes have been made, and there are also some blocks that we missed the first time, just due to time constraints. So today, we're going to take a look at some of the new blocks, some of the new crafting recipes, and some of the changes to existing blocks, as well as a certain few items. Our first victim is this totally new looking block right here that I am not mousing over. Can you all guess what it is? That's right, it is an old block. It is what used to be the echo chamber. It is now called a resonator. It does the same thing, but it has a new skin and a new name, and boy is it wild looking. And, if you couldn't tell, it no longer uses discs. Instead, look at this, it has a post. What goes there, you ask? Why? A cylinder, a tuning cylinder goes here. Right click with this, and it starts to play. Just like before. So functionally, this is the same block. It just has a new look and a new feel, and a new skin for all of what used to be resonance archives that are now tuning cylinders. And of course, you want to keep your tuning cylinders in a chest, but making chests has become a lot more complicated. It used to be that in order to make a chest, you would just take eight boards, put them in a circle, and bam, you get a chest. But now, you get a bookshelf instead. What happened? What gives? Well, the recipe for the chest now requires some parts. And those parts must be smithed by an expert on the anvil. But there are changes to that too. As usual, we have our hammers we'll still need, but watch what happens when I try to pick up an ingot from the fire. Oh, I picked it up and it hurts. What happened? What gives? Well, we now require a pair of wooden tongs in our offhand in order to safely carry and use an ingot. But aside from that, we can right click as usual and we can make some nails and strips. Now these are a new recipe. Looks like they're interesting. I don't know if we can make an entire set with just one ingot, but let's find out. So it looks like you can't make a full batch of eight with one ingot, but there is a recipe for four pieces. Let's grab this and try again. If we do the recipe for four, how many do we get? Or how many do we need here? Let's see. So one ingot will get us four and two ingots will get us eight. So it's a fairly straightforward recipe. Unlike the arrows where you can do six or nine with a single ingot, this is a direct one to one linear relationship. And that's fine. But same as with the hot ingots, if we remove our tongs from our main hand, we can't pick up anything hot anymore. So, yep, just bear that in mind. You'll have to have tongs in hand in order to handle anything hot. This means that having a barrel for quenching all of your smithed items is going to be that much more important. Just throw them in, wait for them to stop bubbling. And they should be good to go. Let's find out. Awesome. So now, to make your chest, all you do is go to your inventory, drop your nails and strips in the middle, and surround them like you did before, only this time, instead of an empty spot, you keep the nails and strips there, and you get your wooden chest. And, in case you're wondering, the recipe for the wooden trunk has not changed. Two chests, right in your crafting grid in any orientation, even stacked, works just fine. Now, gates. Gates is something that I missed in the last episode due to time constraints, but there are new large gates in the game. We've already seen the new large doors. They are one by three blocks. The gates, however, come in a two by two and a two by four option. Now these are both large gates. You'll see that the two by twos do not have much of the metal reinforcement, whereas the two by fours do. And that is because, if you go to the handbook and look up your gate, 
you will see that the 2x2s require one set of nails and strips and 12 total boards of any type. And the 2x4 gates, however, require 30 boards of whatever type plus 10 sets of nails and strips. So these 2x4 gates are pretty expensive at about two and a half ingots, whereas these are one quarter of one ingot each. So this right here represents five ingots of, I think, iron, actually. No, it looks like they can be made of basically any type of nails and strips. Not sure why you want to use gold or silver, but you can, I suppose. Our next preview today is going to be of these new roofs. Now, these have been in the game for a little while now. They just haven't been available in survival. These are the sod roofs, and they come with all the usual accoutrement. We have the slanted roofs, we have the outer corners and the inner corners, we have the roof ridges and the roof tips, just like all the other roof options. Now you'll see that the inner corner seems to have a connection issue here. I hope that is fixed by the time that this version releases because this is kind of a very weird junction. However, this roof has given me some great ideas for the next season of the Vintage Story Guide. Hmm, what could I mean by that? I don't know. Moving on, we have books, books, and more books. Now, why am I bringing up books again? Well, there have been some changes to them, and one is that it is not possible to actually make books, but it is a bit of an involved process. To make a book, you're going to need a barrel and some water and a whole bunch of other stuff. You're going to need some kind of flax, whether it's twine, fibers, or bandages, and you'll need some leather, you also need a new tool, a sieve of wood and linen strings. And that is made with this recipe here, just four boards and five twine in this pattern here. And what you need to do is you need to take your flax twine and you will soak it in your water for 24 hours. And you will then get some of these linen fiber pulp pieces, which you'll then put into your crafting grid with the sieve and you'll get parchment out of it. It takes four pieces of this fiber pulp to make one parchment and they stack to 32. If you then take your parchment and pieces of leather and put them in your grid like this, you will need eight pieces of parchment to make a single book, and the book's color will be determined by the color of the leather that you use. We need a brick red book there. Now, books come in a very specific set of colors, and because of that, you can't just take your parchment and drop it in your grid with any color of leather. It instead requires some specific combinations. You can make an olive book with yellow and green. You can make a teal book with blue and green. There we go. And there are a few other colors of books that are available, but just so you don't try to spend too much time fiddling with the colors in your inventory, you may as well look in the handbook and see what colors of books there are, as well as how to make them. Brick red books are just plain leather. Cherry red are just two red leather. Dark beige are yellow and leather. Dark gray are gray and black. Dark green are green and black. Dark olive are green and gray. Gray is gray and gray. Olive is yellow and green. Orange is orange and orange. Orange brown is orange and regular. Purple is purple purple. Purple orange is orange and purple. And you have teal with blue and green. These other books are not obtainable, at least not in survival. These are generally relegated for the clutter blocks. Now there is something else to look at right here. In this case, they're hard to see, but there are actually things in this case. What do we have but butterflies? Why, yes, that's right. You can now capture butterflies. And to do that, you need a butterfly net. The butterfly net is made with some nails and strips, a piece of plain cloth, and two sticks. And you get your net. And the butterflies themselves, which are everywhere, can be captured by clicking on them. And you get a dead red admiral in this case. When you catch them, the butterflies die, unfortunately. But that is the only way to get them for use in these cases. So, get working on your collection and spread death throughout the world. Now our last look at new things today is going to be the new flowers that are in the game. Wait, there aren't any. But many of the flowers that were already in the game have received some pretty good updates. Except for you, I'm not so sure that you got an update. Maybe you did. 
Hard to say. But all the flowers here have received an update to their texture and their models in some cases. So we have, starting at the beginning, we have the blue cornflower that is a bit bushier than before. We have the cat mint, which I think is a bit bushier than before. We have forget-me-nots that come in sets of three now. We have the edelweiss that no one's ever seen before. So, yeah, that's there. The heather is a bit bushier than it used to be. The horsetail is, wow, that is a lot fuller of a model than it used to be. The orange mallow is a bit taller and a bit more saturated. I'm not sure you got any updates, but maybe you did? Hard to say. The dwarf furs, I think, is a little taller. I can't tell. The cow parsley went crazy. Look at this thing. Look how bushy that is. The golden poppy is now actually gold now, instead of red, orange, and yellow. But I will kind of miss that little color scheme. The lily of the valley now comes in these bunches right here. As an added bonus, they don't lose their texture when you look at them from certain angles. And last but not least, the woad is now much taller and much fuller. And look at that. You can hide in this stuff. You can't see me anymore. Well, everyone, that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the preview of some of the new items and the new recipes in the game, and some of the new mechanics. Also, check out me sitting on the edge of this block. Is that cool or what? I purposely didn't go over the clutter blocks because there are maybe, I don't know, a thousand of them in the game. But we may look at some of those in upcoming videos because they may be a bit more relevant now. The clutter blocks will soon be collectible, asterisk. And I say asterisk because they will have a drop rate of supposedly 50%. So you might get them, you might not. Well, everyone, that is it for the video. What are you most excited about for 1.18? Leave it in a comment below. As always, my name is Hasan Kurazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.